start, we're going to welcome Modernized Wine, and we have Mark Hicken, who's going to talk to you about Modernized Wine to the old boat. Thanks a lot, Richard. Oh, <laughs> um, and thank you very much for inviting me to be here to talk. Uh, my name is Mark Hicken. I'm a wine industry lawyer, I'm also president of the Modernized Wine Association of BC. And what are we about? To answer that, I'm going to give you like, a bit of a history lesson. Uh, relax a little bit. It's the history of our I'm talking about prohibition. This picture here is a picture of a lady named Carrie Nation. She was one of a fierce group of anti-alcohol campaigners in the early 1900s. She has a hatchet in her hand in that picture, which she often used to smash bottles of alcohol in bars and towns. And the mentality of her group was that all alcohol consumption is bad. There was no distinction between wine and beer. There was no distinction between wine and hard spirits. No distinction between amounts consumed. Everything about alcohol was bad in their minds. Did you hear that? needed to be stopped. Hopefully not. <laughs> the temperance groups of which Carrie was a part uh, launched a successful campaign to introduce prohibition in both Canada and the United States. In British Columbia, prohibition lasted from 1917 to 1920, only three years. Prohibition in the United States lasted from 1920 to 1933, 13 years. In fact, this coming Thursday is the 80th anniversary of the repeal of prohibition in the United States. Yay! Thank you, yeah. Um, why is this history lesson important? Because the repeal of prohibition in both Canada and the United States ushered in the introduction of laws and distribution systems which were based on a control mentality. The control mentality was adopted from the prohibitionists. It still was based on the thinking that all alcohol consumption was bad. The new laws allowed drinking, but there was still no distinction between wine and beer, between wine and spirits. And the problem that we face in BC today is that many of our current laws and distribution systems can be traced back to that post-prohibition control mentality. That's why today we have lots of silly rules like no happy hours, which incidentally are coming back. Uh, no commercial wine auctions, no sale of wine between individuals, incredibly high tax rates on wine, government control over the retail and also systems for wine. And that, in short, is why modernized wine exists. We want to change the way that BC's regulatory structure approaches wine. We want wine to be treated more like an agricultural product than it is. So we are advocating for a modern food and wine culture. We want to get rid of the control mentality in terms of nation and prohibitionists. And we want BC's wine regulations to be more like the rest of the world. Respectful of a treasured and inspiring agricultural product that has been enjoyed for thousands of years as part of a civilized food and wine culture. At Modernized Wine, we've already fought to open up international wine shipping to allow corporate restaurants and to allow charity wine auctions. And we made some extensive submissions to the government's liquor policy review. Um, as you probably know, that report is due early But there's lots more to be done. If you'd like to help, please check out our website at modernizewine.ca and or talk to me here tonight or our executive director, Frankie Dad, who is right here. In closing, uh, I'll leave you with some other thoughts. These ones are from Ernest Hemingway. He famously said of wine, wine is one of the most civilized things in the world, and one of the most natural things in the world is being brought to the greatest perfection. And it offers a greater range of enjoyment and appreciation than possibly any other purely sensory.